one, a two of the Apier. So this is gonna be a beginner's guide on ScarQuest to get you up and running and just so that you're able to get the most out of the game. ScarQuest is now available on iOS, Android, and Steam. Today, I'll be playing it on iOS. So first off, just head right into the App Store and search for Scar ScarQuest right there. Give it a chance to download. Once it's downloaded, go ahead and open up the game. Notifications, yes, those are nice because you'll be notified when someone is attacking your base and you're able to send reinforcements right on the spot. Valhalla requires a 115 megabyte download. No problem. You need to agree to the terms of service. And then you can either log in with your Apple ID, with your Twitter slash X account, or as a guest, um, if you sign in with your Twitter account, as of right now, it'll automatically pull in your profile photo of whatever you have on Twitter. Um, I have an account with my Twitter already, so I'm gonna be using I, with my iCloud just to show the game from a fresh start. Little introduction animation, next. And the first thing we are greeted with is a battle versus our enemy team, just to kind of start getting a feel for the game right away. So the way the game works is you have different characters which are displayed on these cards, and then you deploy those by dragging them to the blue areas. And then the battlefield is made up of three different tiles. So as you progress along the battlefield, you're able to put troops in di different blue fields for those tiles. Summon your frontline forces to divert the enemy's attention and absorb their firepower. Okay, so here we go. It's kind of giving me an animation of what that will look like. Dragging the card over, attacking. This guy over here is a good tank. So, okay, so this, I see the troops have made some progress, so I unlocked another blue field, kind of closer to where the battle's going on. And then if I send this scorpion guy in, you'll see he's gonna, he's gonna go right past the troops and go for this tower over here. But like this, some of the some of the characters have more hit points. They're better tanks. Better, better. You're gonna do better sending those first, letting them take the damage. And then other characters are more DPS, but they don't have as much health. So you want to put those a little more behind so that they can do their do their damage dealing. Here, I'm gonna send some other of these characters. These are some more DPS, and we'll send another scorpion. All right. So we just won that victory, started off with a win. A great victory, the home base is now yours. So this right here is our home base. It's a kind of like a space station. And this is gonna be where you can build, as it says here, various facilities. First, build a star hall to establish your base. So a star hall is basically your main building. If you've played Clash of Clans, it's kind of like your town hall. Star hall. There we go. And one of the things that is important to note is building points. So depending how many buildings you have on your base and what level those facilities are, you get more building points. And sometimes you need to get your building points up to be able to build other things or do other things in the game. So I'll, I'll show you some more of that. This up here is where you collect those resources. This right here, your defense deployment, this is the base that enemies or other players will attack when they attack you. So basically, as I was talking about, you have three different tiles, and the tiles have different barriers and things on them which kind of force the troops to go in a certain direction. So you can use this to your advantage because you can position some maybe some long-range troops that are kind of protected by a wall so they can be sh attacking the enemy as they're going through there. You can set traps up, a whole bunch of cool stuff. Use the auto button for a swift deployment. So if you'd like to use the auto button, it'll automatically deploy some units onto here. Um, this might is nice at first just to get, just to get something going, but um, it's nice to kind of play around with it, customize it, and then something really useful is that you can review when other characters attack your base and you can see kind of where the weak points are, maybe where you can improve. And I'm gonna talk about a little more of that a little later. So closing that out, we have that set up. Back at our home base, 
for reinforcements, under siege, answer the call to, to assist in the defense. So this right here, if it says frontline call for aid, reinforce, it means someone's attacking us. And what's cool is you can in real time come and support your base. You'll have some like airstrikes and then there's also some other kind of things you can cast that'll help you. Some of them will heal your troops. Some of them will kind of freeze the enemy's troops. So this right here is kind of like an airstrike. Um, kind of throws a bunch of, of missiles from the sky, or lasers, and kind of just puts a bit of damage on all the characters that the, the person attacking you has sent in. And it also gives you some time, because they kind of get knocked down for a second, your base gets a little more chance to, to throw some stuff. Over here, we have this freeze. So I'm gonna wait till they're in range of my characters, and then maybe I'll throw the, the freeze and, and slow them down. See, you know, once you kind, of, you kind of start to figure out when's the right time to use stuff. You don't want to just, if you just spam anything, you might get lucky, you might not. But if you're um, kind of, you want to put a little bit of thought into uh, why you're doing something at a certain time. Participate in a total of two siege battles. So let's click on this. And up here, we can see our current ranking. So I'm currently 700 and in 755th place. Down here, we have a rewards button. So if you open this up, as your score goes up, your ranking, your ranking, then you'll receive um, different rewards along the way. So this first one can sit, confirm that, and we can see tons of different rewards to come as we get our points up. And these are all useful things that you can use in game. Use them for upgrading stuff, purchasing stuff. Some of them are resources. All great stuff. The next thing I'd like to go over is how to edit your deck for when you want to when you're attacking someone else. So simply click on battle, and then over here in the left corner where you see the three cards and it says default, click on that, and it'll open up this page. So you can have four different card decks set up configured differently. Right now I'm just on the default card deck, and I'm going to go ahead and click edit deck. So on the left hand side, these are all the characters that I currently have. These are all the ones that are that I have. Over here on the right are the characters that I have in this deck. And from my understanding is it is randomized. So when, when you're playing the when you play a game different times, you you don't get all your cards at the same time. You get a certain amount and it's kind of in a random order, so you kind of got to figure out the best plan based on what in what order you get it. But what we can do is we can edit this up if we want to have some of these characters like for example this character right here, the incendi incendiary warhound, which is a great character, um, shoots from a, from a far range and can do a lot of damage. If we want to add that to our deck, maybe I'll remove this character over here by clicking the X, and then click on the warhound, and it'll add it in there. You can also, you know, of course, we could remove all of our cards if we wanted to and then just come in here and select the ones that we want. And another important point is to check out the specific details for the different characters. And you do that by clicking this little magnifying glass with a little plus in the middle on the bottom right of a card. This will bring up the name, what um, level they are, how many stars, and you can see how much health, how much damage. If you click on details, you can get even more information it's definitely worthwhile taking a quick read through here, kind of reading some of the details of different characters, kind of knowing whether it's a tank, whether they're better at more damage and stuff, and then this way when you're playing the game, you aren't just like throwing cards, characters out there randomly because sometimes it can work out, but like I said, if you have a little bit of strategy, because this is a strategy game, you're gonna do a lot better, have a lot better success at getting those wins. So I'm just gonna throw together a, a deck. So I like this guy over here. His name's the Burning Warlord Cory. And he has quite a bit of health. Um, he also does good damage, but kind of like a tank at the same time. I like these dudes down here, which we click the plus. We can see they have f f over 4,000 health. They're called the, pol pol the Polar Bear Overlord Bill. They do quite a bit of damage, but have a lot of health great tanks. So I'm going to add both of those in there. Add in that one. I like this one. These are the Scorpions, the Siege Scorpion, and they do 
have quite a bit of good health, but check it out. This unit can only attack buildings. If there are no buildings to be found, this unit reduces surrounding enemies' attack speeds. So these are great to send in because they're going to go straight for the buildings that are doing damage to your troops and just go right for there. And as I said, if it's not, they don't have buildings to attack, they just kind of support your other players by slowing down the enemies. So I'm going to add a few of those in there. A quick look at a few other characters. We have this one. This is the Short Spear Gladiator Della and quite a bit of damage, not as much health as some of the other ones, so I would send this one maybe a little behind to kind of so that she's able to stay alive and do damage. I'm gonna add one of those. I'm going to add one of these. This is the the Flying Shield Annette. Add one of those and I'm going to add one of these. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Yes. One other cool thing is as you start to upgrade your, your, your cards, you can come over here and click the filter drop down and you can say maybe you only want to see your cards that you've upgraded to level 3. You can do that and boom, see all those cards right there nice and easy. Right now, it's not does it may not seem as useful, but when you start to get more and more cards, you start to upgrade certain certain cards because you can have multiple cards of the same character at different level at different rankings. And as you play the game more, you'll get more and more cards and yeah, there's just some some nice filters to have in there. So I'm going to close this out. Another thing you can do from within the battle tab is down here where there's kind of like a magnifying glass over the two squares is your battle record. So I don't have any battle record yet, but this is where you'll be able to see the battles that you've attacked on other people and you can also see when other people attack you. So even if you're not online, you can always come in here and see who attacked you. You can watch a replay. Take, learn some stuff from that and you also have a re revenge tab so you can then get revenge and attack their base getting their resources so I'm gonna go ahead and begin a battle with my newly formed deck getting ready this animation is actually of the battle I'm about to have I'm against space okay so a few things to note over here, I'll go over them as I send some characters in. Over here, we have this plus, which kind of just zooms in a little on the game if you want to get a closer look. I'm going to send some of these scorpions in. Just grab them and drag them over to the blue section. Over here, we have an emoji where we can send some, some pre-written messages or these emojis down here to our enemy. So sometimes they'll be online live reinforcing and you can send some stuff in here. Just kind of have fun with it. And then over here with this camera with the arrows around it changes your perspective, your angle, viewing angle of the game. Come all the way around to there. So depending um, what angle you like, sometimes this angle is fun because it's kind of like going in that direction. Or just the good old default where you can see a lot of the game at the same time. Okay, down here, so this, on the, each card, you'll see there's a little lightning bolt with a number on it. That is how much energy it requires to deploy that character. So down here, I have this bar of 10. So if I send this seven, I'm gonna, I used up seven of them and I was left with three and then they start, it starts regenerating. So the higher number ones, like this one over here with the nine, that takes nine bars of energy. But as I said, that character, is really good so sometimes sometimes you you got to make what's the best decision sometimes you don't want to wait for the best character because it sometimes it's going to take too long and then that might mean that your other characters get killed sometimes you want to send in some characters that only use two three bars of energy because you can get them out a little quicker to help out sometimes you have time and you want to wait until you can send those stronger troops so that's all just kind of stuff that you kind of start to figure out as you play the game. And I will say, um, it is very, the, the game is very fun. I've played, I've played quite a few different games and had some times where I'm like really hooked on games. And this is one of those games where, and totally honest, like I, as I began to play it more, I find myself like getting, I'm getting like more and more hooked on it as you start to 
see the ranking, you start to figure out it a little bit better, you have different chests that you are opening over a few hours, so you wanna go in there, open those, start opening another chest. For the mining, because the mining, sometimes you deploy troops and then you need to come back in three hours. So definitely um, been enjoying playing the game. So we just got a chest over here. We can op unlock it immediately for one of these or 10 seconds, just go with immediate. So it's one, these are chrono boosters, which speed up the process of doing a lot of things. But um, of course you might run out of them at some point. Okay, so I got a hero rank upgrade material. Combat tile rank upgrade materials. A pickaxe. And a battery. There we go, a little overview. Nice. Okay, so I'm gonna close that out. New players, login reward. Log in every day for extra rewards. So every day that you log in, you can receive rewards. So this, you know, you, you don't have to think um, to play Scar, it's like designed that you don't need to be like, oh, I need like two hours to like go crazy um, gaming. You know, it's it's on mobile, so you can be like, I'll be, I'll just be like out doing something. I can have a, I have a free moment, or I'm waiting in line or something. I can pull up my phone, play a quick two three minute game, collect some rewards, boom, move on with um, what I'm doing. Over here in the top left corner, if we click on our account, we can see our account info. We have our mail. We have the options. This is like the settings where you can control the music, the sound, and the quality that the game is running at along with the language. We have the rewards over here for the daily logins. And then we have the new players login reward over here. And then there is the leaderboard. So you can see who's in the who has the highest score. And then you can see what score you have and what position you're in. Down here is another way to get to the battle record but we do have to have five battles before we can do that. And then down here, we can see if we'd like to bind or unbind our, our, our account to the account that we logged in with, if you ever need to do that. And then of course, the sign, a sign out button. Another thing is this seven day recruit challenge. So currently there is this challenge going on and each day it gets unlocked as you play the game. But you can see there's different challenges in here. So participate in a total of 12 siege battles. Those are just 12 battles. And then you're gonna receive all these, these rewards, which are resources that are useful for upgrading things. And there's a whole bunch of different challenges you can do in here. So you can always come in here, you can see what type of challenges you have, and then you can click go. Let's say I'm like upgrade the bio lab. I don't have my bio lab built yet. But it's cool because you can always come in here, see what type of challenges there are, click go and um, work on getting some of those. And even as the days progress, you can always go, you can always complete these previous ones because some of these are kind of like building up. So as you go along, it'll, it, some of them are like higher and higher siege battle numbers. So you can still complete these previous ones on these other days. And then there's also rewards up here, which you'll get a lot of different rewards throughout the game, you'll notice. Next up, I'd like to show you the store. So the store is right here. Keep in mind the game isn't in, it's still, things are still being rolled out. Um, but currently there are these Vesta, the Fire Magi, Magi. The drop rate for the season's featured hero is 10 times higher than other heroes. So you can use these gotcha points, gotcha tickets to purchase these. I don't have any at the moment. But if you come over to General Gotcha Machine, there is a free you can do. Just swipe across the screen and we got 240 chrono boosters. Sweet. Click on the screen and then down here there is an event with daily deals and things you'll be able to you can buy using um, one of the currencies up here, the Val. All right, exiting out of there, let's take a look at the Gill tab. So we just click on that and we have a search tab where we can search for different guilds. So there's been quite a few different ones created. We have, you can also create your own guild if you would like to do that. And then there's also the leaderboard based on the collective score of all the players within that guild. So I actually started this Booyah Clan guild down here. There's still some open spaces. So if anyone is interested in joining, feel free to join. We're in there, over here. Use that as an example. Exiting out of here, 
Right now, you can chat within the guild and kind of just have fun in there. But in the future, there's going to be more and more things to do with the guild um, that'll come out in the future. That'll be rolled out. Next tab let's check out is over here, the land tab. This, um, you can't link your wallet yet and have your land right there. So this is something that will be rolled out in the near future. So for now, um, there, isn't, there isn't anything to do there. And of course, you can see the planet back here, which has all the land and stuff going on there. But like I said, some features are still being rolled out. So we aren't fully to that phase, but once you can mine, you would do mine on the planet. A few other little things is if you ever are like moving the map around and you can't find your home base station, you can click this little pin over here. It looks like a little pin on a map and it'll re it'll reset your view so you can find your space station. I'm gonna go in there and build some more things. So if we go here into building, we have all these different types of buildings. These are the main ones, so I'm gonna build a biolab center. Go ahead and build that. I can move it around my space so I can organize it how I'd like. And the biolab center is actually used to upgrade my characters. So let's see, I can construct characters here or I can rank characters up. So I could go rank up. I could say, I wanna rank this character, confirm. I'll see the cost of it. And I could go ahead and rank it up and this is gonna, be, this one star becomes a two star, just like that, and we can see the upgrades, the improvements that I get. So with a better rank, I do more damage, have more health, and more mining bonus. So um, definitely worth upgrading your characters, and especially as you fight stronger bases and stuff, you're gonna need characters that are upgraded to be able to keep up with that. The next tab next to that is, is the research tab. This is where we can upgrade the buildings that we have on our home base. Just click plus, upgrade them, but I, I don't have enough resources currently to, to upgrade that. And what you'll see is, as I was talking about the building points, is right now my building points are at 130, but let's say to mine, I need to get to 200. So I can upgrade, if I upgrade this one, I can see it'll give me a, another 30 building points. And then another another thing that you can do to get more points from within building is down here, well this, this tab, these are to build on land, so we can't use those buildings yet because we're not working with land yet. But down here, there is, for example, like decorations that you can create. And if you put those decorations, you might get 10 building points and you do a few of those that can help you get those building points up to be able to do certain things and upgrade other other things. And then of course we have storage where we can see all of the all of the characters or units that we have here. We can see our combat tiles. We can see the items, any items that we have, and once we can have land, we'll be able to see that in here. So next, let's take a look at our defense deployment. So I'm going to click on defense deployment again and so yes we know it consists of three tiles we have our characters here and we did the auto deploy but let's take a look at how to edit it yourself for example what we can do is right now we're selected on the characters up here at the top is how much space we have for characters so this tile on the far left has seven spaces so i can put one character that uses seven spaces or i can put multiple characters that add up to seven or less of course um, let's see, like if I were to remove these characters, then I have all seven spaces open and I could throw this character over there that uses up all seven spaces, but maybe it's worth it because this character is stronger, has more, more health and can do more do damage. Another thing you can edit is you can edit these, these are little like mines that do, do certain little things depending on the tile. Some of them will do damage or like freeze the characters. So you can actually grab those and move those around this space. You can't put them in the red. That's where the enemy will be deploying their troops, but you can move these around. And something to note is as you upgrade your tiles, you'll get more space on the tile along with you'll get more things on the tile to, to like traps and things to do. So something to note is 
you might put the traps in a certain place, but then you maybe re you watch the replay of someone attacking your base and you are like, oh, I could put that trap in this other spot and it's gonna do a lot better or maybe a trap that like does da just keeps doing damage. So you might wanna position that where the troops are gonna be standing right over it, just taking damage from it. As far as editing the tiles, click on that and we can click, let's say, for example, this tile up here doesn't have any um, like barricades on it. So I kind of like, I, of course, using tiles with barricades, you can use those to your advantage. So I'm gonna put this one, this central wall one over here. On the first tile. And it did, did change how much space I have, but this one allows me to kind of use this wall to my advantage. So I could have this character kind of hiding a little bit more in here. And then this trap, this spiky trap, maybe I put over here. This square, for example, is spikes that come out of the ground. So it can be nice to put those somewhere where you could put them along the way where characters will get hit by them once, or you could put them somewhere where the enemy might be standing over them for a while, taking continuous damage. We have over here, we have this eye, kind of looks like eye with spikes on top and this will just make the barricades kind of um, invisible or transparent, which if it just helps you set up your base. We have the reset, remove all units for a fresh start. And we also have this over here, which is to choose your reinforcements. And this are the reinforcements that you, you deploy during a game. So we can see what type of, what the different reinforcements do, some of them like slow down the characters, some of them immobilize them. This one up here, bombard the enemy forces with artillery rounds. So with my base set up, I'm gonna close that out. And that's gonna be a wrap for this video. I covered as much as I could. Of course, I couldn't cover every little detail. There's a lot more stuff to still get into into the, into the game as you progress along. But I hope you found this useful with getting started and getting the most out of the game. I'll see you in Valhalla.